These projects are designed to cultivate multiple skill sets that complement a series of videos created for the purpose of acquiring a foundational knowledge of the Python programming language. These projects will cover coding both console-based and GUI applications. TK Enter is a Python binding to the TK GUI toolkit, and its framework is built into Python's standard library, so it does not require the installation of any additional modules. This makes TK Enter a convenient choice for building graphical interfaces for Python applications. All source code in these videos is available at the one byte at a time GitHub repository. You will find a link to the code used in each video beneath it, in its description and comment section. You may use these links to download the source code. This project will give you some basic practice with bubble sorting. And a bubble sort is done in just about every type of computer language. And it's uh, a way to sort random values or disorganized values in ascending or descending order. And it does that by using an iterable, an array, a list type object. And it looks at the current object and then the object that comes right after it and compares them to see if it's less than or greater than. And then it will simply shuffle and depending on whether you're sorting in ascending or descending, move that object uh, to the left or to the right as it cycles through every single element in the array. So our first method called high score one, um, we're going to input some scores in any random order. I'll just, you know, this comes in as a string and I'll just input them in a non-contiguous fashion so, so that they'll require sorting. So it comes in as a string and we're going to split. And remember that the default delimiter for the split method is white space. And we're going to store that in array of scores. Okay. So there's our array of scores. And then we have another array, array of scores int. Okay. So this is going to split at the white space and give us individual strings. And then we have another array here. It's empty that will hold integers. Now we have to parse or convert it because in this for loop here, remember that every element is still a string. You know, whatever number I enter, it's not an actual integer. It's a string. That's what we get from input. So here we have to convert it or parse it. And that's what we're using the int method for. We're going to get the length of the number of scores we have after we've converted them to integers and store it in num scores. Okay, there are, and we'll display how many scores to bubble sort. And then the basic structure for a bubble sort is always a nested for loop. There's an outer loop and an inner loop. Okay. A basic bubble sort works with uh, two for loops, one nested inside of the other. There's an outer loop and an inner loop. The outer loop will simply iterate through every single element stored in the array. But remember the fence post era or issue? Because the index uh, subscript value of an array or a list, an iterable, starts at 0 and not at 1, we could have 12 elements in our array, 12 integers, but it would not be indexed as 1 through 12. It would be indexed as 0 through 11. Still 12 elements, but 0 to 11 rather than 1 to 12. So hence, that's why we, we set up our outer for loop to be you know, minus one. We're going to start at element zero. So hypothetically, say we had 12 elements, that would be zero to 11. That's why we're subtracting one. So that, that outer for loop will cycle through every single element in the array. And then the inner for loop, for every iteration of the outer for loop, if we had hypothetically 12 elements, 12 integers indexed zero through 11, um, you know, for every single one of those elements, those integers, the inner loop will then cycle through the array again and compare that to every other element inside the array. And again, we'll start at zero. We'll look at the first element in the array, and then we'll go to and compare it to it minus, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then minus one. Okay. So basically what we're going to do, we'll have a, a logic structure, a decision structure. If the current element is greater 
than the element that comes right after it. Right? That's what we're saying. Then do what? Well, we need to store, we need a variable to temporarily store the value of the current element. Otherwise, we lose the value because we're going to overwrite that value in the next line. We're going to take the element to the right next to it because in this case, the current element is greater than the element and we're going to move it to the current element, okay? But we haven't lost the value because we stored it in temp. So then we can take the element that's to the right of it and set it to be the value that we stored up here in temp. So step through this in your head. Imagine that if this condition were true, imagine that we have an integer, say the first number is 15 and the one that comes right after it is 10, okay? Well, then this condition would be true, right? 15 is greater than 10. So the number is greater than the number that comes after it. So it's not being sorted in ascending order. So to bubble sort it, we will take that 15 and store it in temp. And then we'll take the 10 to the right of the 15 and overwrite the current element that holds the value 15. Uh, so now this, this current element has a value of 10. And in this case, this element here, the element right next to it, we need to save change that to the, the value that we stored in temp. So now it would be 15. So it was 15, 10, but now it's 10, 15. It's been sorted in you know ascending order in a bubble sort. And it would do this for every single element. So for every iteration of the outer loop out here, it goes through every element. So for every element, for every element, sorting it. And by the time we get done, you know, all of these iterations happening in the inner loop for all for each iteration in the outer loop, we will have successfully swapped and sorted all of our values from the least to the greatest in ascending order. Okay. And then here we're just gonna use another for loop to go through and display the results. So let's take a look at that. And Bring this up here and let's run it. There. Let's enter some scores. So 2, 4, 4, 4, um, 57, 809, uh, 21, 777. Oh, I'm trying to be as random as I can. 23. 42, the meaning of life, 98, 203. All right, so there we go. Separated by white space. And scores from lowest to highest are. See how our bubble sort rearranged everything. We entered all this randomly. This is how it came in. It was randomly, but notice how that it's all been sorted in ascending order from the least to the greatest. So basic bubble sort there. Let's take a look at another bubble sort. And there's different ways to do it. I wanted to be more explicit the first time, but um, in high score three, same thing. We take our input, comes as a string, we split it using the default delimiter white space array of of scores integer and we have to parse or convert it to an integer just like before. We get the length of the array and we have some nested loops, but here we have X and Y. We have to subtract one to offset for the fence post and we'll use a variable flag, okay? We'll set it to zero. For every iteration in our outer for loop, flag will get set to zero. And then for our inner for loop, as we iterate through every element, We'll compare it to every single other element in the inner for loop. Same condition or test, right? Same process using a temp variable. And we'll set flag to 1, OK? And then if flag is set to 0, we'll break. Now I think this is a bit less elegant, but just showing you another way to skin that cat. So same thing here. Let's go down and run high scores 3.
Let's enter some random squares. Okay, there's our random squares. And the highest square in this case is 1,200. Okay. Six squares in the array. Let's go back to bubble sort three. And we're just getting, we're grabbing the last square, right? The last element after it's been bubble sorted. And then there's a couple of other uh, bubble sorts here. In this case, these are just, we don't have to input any values, but just to show you that I can input a random sequence of numbers. Let's do this one here, bubble sort ascending. All right, so bubble sort ascending. These numbers or integers are in random order. And we're going to get the length of, you know, want to find the number of elements stored in that array. And again, we have nested for loops. But this is just to show you doing that condition or test. This is a, a shorthand method. I actually like the more explicit or verbose method. It's, it's less confusing. But to show you that you can do this, a shorthand way of saying that is take, take the current element and the one that comes right after it and then swap it or swap their position such that it becomes, you know, the one to the right becomes the left and the one to the left becomes the right. But just to show you that it, it does the same thing, see, before the bubble cert, here they are in random order. After the bubble cert, they are in ascending order. Okay? That's just to show you that that's a shorthand method of doing that. And what if we wanted to do not ascending, but what if we wanted to do descending in our bubble cert? All right, so let's do that. Bubble cert descending. Again, we've got some random values. Um, same thing, we're getting the number of elements in the array. We have a nested for loop, but notice here that our, our condition or our test is if it's less than, we want to sort the values or swap the values. So let's see how that works. We're on descending now, and that was ascending. Let's run this. And see, now these random values are sorted in descending order. So it's just based on the condition of, of the test, less than or greater than, whether or not we want to shuffle them, you know, shuffle what's on the right and move it to the left. And these would be more ex explicitly coded without the shorthand method. So bubble hand ascending to, or bubble sort ascending to, again, using our temp variable. If the current element is greater than what's to the right of it, swap their position is all we're saying right just looks a little more explicit there so let's run it and here we are in ascending order there's our sort and now let's come down here and descending to okay and again we've just changed the the value of the condition here okay but explicitly, we're just, again, taking a value to the right and swapping it with the value on the left if it meets our condition. Less than for descending, greater than for ascending. And we're, you know, we still have to offset for the fence post. So we're always subtracting one for both the outer loop and the inner loop. Okay, so let's run that. And look at a descending bubble cert. And now here we are descending. So this is just, it's a good project, good exercise to get some experience with lists, iterables, arrays, see how they work, index and subscript values, and how to do a basic bubble sort in ascending or descending order. As an alternative to a bubble sort, you could also use uh, Python's built-in max and min methods or functions, okay? Um, 
And to do that, let's get on here and run this. And if I input a random set of values, uh, let's do 3, 56, 12, and 5. Okay. So my max square is 900, my minimum square is 3. Okay, and these were the array values in this, in this order. But just some built-in methods that you might use.